Hi, I'm Chris, and this is I'm Pi from Lord of the Lost. He's <laughs> also from Lord of the Lost. <laughs> We're both from Lord of the Lost, and um, you're watching Over Music. I think that's like a story that I've told so many times. I tried as briefly as possible back then. <laughs> Do you have some harp sounds? <laughs> like 100 years ago I had some musical ideas that didn't seem to fit in any of the musical projects I had back then. So it was time to form a new band and um, the name Lord of Lost actually for us means it's some kind of shelter or last resort for people that seek their yeah their shelter in music like we do and um, that's pretty much it Lord of Loss is not a person it's uh, this feeling they assume that I am guilty but guilt I see now the biggest musical influences would be I don't want to name bands but bands from overall heavy music now I will name bands as Architects and Bring Me the Horizon, but also pop acts, for example, Lady Gaga or Lana Del Rey. And in terms of his thumb, <laughs> uh, in terms of Lord of the Lost, we draw inspiration from basically anywhere and any genre that we like. Yeah, for me it's always hard to say because I think inspiration is something, for me, which is more coming like passively. So I think I get inspired without really being are really recognizing that I am or I get inspired so and of course by your thumb <laughs> <laughs> it took us exactly nine months I mean not from the initial idea but from the first day of songwriting till the mastering process was nine months. Yeah, about that. The initial idea, though, was formed way earlier. Speaking about Lady Gaga, actually, like the fascination with the word Judas mm -hmm. just came by that song of hers in 2014. But then nothing happened for a long time. So, but that was just the first, like, wow, that's a great word, without even thinking about the topic. Right, and then going into the word some years later, I think it was 2019, when actually you started talking more about what if that could be a base for a concept. Yeah, I really had a weird dream about it. Like I dreamt about like having yeah. having Judas as an album, also like the album cover, how it looks like looks now. I kinda had it in mind without really I know I, I wrote it I think I did a voice message to you guys. Yeah. In in the WhatsApp group or something. Mm -hmm. Then P was the one being like mostly like hooked to that topic because we took care uh, both of us mostly about like all lyrics and all things that are actually behind that concept so we started digging yeah and it took some time digging and actually took more than a whole tour we we did our research every night on tour when we had to still had the chance we were lucky to go on tour in january and february in 2020 picture a band in a nightliner like two bands actually was us and equilibrium and picture like I don't know 20 people drinking beer and two others like going through the Bible and theological studies and writing down <laughs> stuff and I don't know uh, crossing stuff out marking stuff with colors with my color then he did stuff with his color and it's we like, talked like, about it like these questions are you guys reading the Bible on on the bus They're like yeah and they're like, why? We're like, yeah, not not what you think. <laughs> not what you think. Not what mom. you think, mom. It's, it's something else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, it was great, actually. A lot of fun. The holy fist of justice became too tired to fight. Let's put it that way, because I don't wanna I don't wanna say too much. Then it's not interesting to dive into that yourself. But don't judge a book or. An album cover by its cover or don't ju judge an album by its cover not entirely because the main thing you see on the cover is you feel like oh it's an inverted cross and then you see oh there must be more to it it's, it's bent down there somehow 
And the moment you realize it looks like a J for Judas, this kind of symbolizes the same feeling that you have with the character of Judas. When I call you, you Judas, it's clearly an insult, it's not a compliment. And if you think a little further about like, if we pretend all of this was history for a second, <clears throat> what Judas is actually like responsible for, there's a little more to that than just treason, and that was super interesting for us. How? With a camera? Um, when? And that's, that's a big thing. We, we started uh, doing the music videos for Priests and For They Know Not What They Do in August 2020 when the album wasn't even done, but I think 99% of the songs were done. So we were able to film to them, to the songs. Obviously, it's a live performance in that cave. To rough demos. Crazy sounds. Mostly, yeah. um, <laughs> God. No, no, we were like really shooting music videos to kind of rough demos. Yeah. But we had to because summer, you know. Yeah, we, you, don't, you don't want to shoot those scenes in case you watch the video. If not, watch it now, open another tab. Um, that would have killed us in winter because in Germany in winter it gets kind of cold and the thing was when we shot the scenes in that unicorn cave that is the the name of the cave where all the band performances are in Priest um, shooting in summer right it was seven degrees <laughs> Celsius the whole time so yeah we, we didn't know we were like yeah we're gonna shoot in summer and then you go there it's winter yeah. the funny thing is like um, there are also studio scenes um, the Gospel of Judas was only filmed in the film studio back then in November and now releasing that on the last day of Pride Month which we didn't plan to release on that day not kind of backfires at us in a weird way like if you go with all the insulting people that for whatever reasons like feel you know th those people that kind of feel intimidated by rainbows <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're, they're like they're like oh well played now you're milking the lgbtiq plus cow on the last day of pride month very spontaneous guys were like yeah dude yeah you know you you wave a flag because you want to milk a cow dude but whatever it, but it was all a lot of fun and it actually was worth it to do everything of it that early because now we really had like time to take care about other things we didn't have to take care about like video shoots like yeah. short prior the release it was really good actually we did good and we're shooting next one next video in like two weeks already or three mm -hmm. in july still this is where this is the second of july we're filming mid july you found your faith and turned on Yes, it did, and I have to go back to the other question. It affected it in two things. It's a, it's a double album, otherwise it wouldn't have been a double album. We wouldn't have the time to do it. And it kind of fucked all our plans because we wanted to make this album some kind of world travel experience. Like, for, for instance, we record drums in Mexico City and guitars in St. Petersburg and yeah. I know songwriting camp we wanted to do in the north of Finland in midsummer. We couldn't do that. So for the next album where we have the chance to do that, like recording an album like all over the world, we gotta do that. But the the good thing and that is one good thing that came with this pandemic, you almost can't couldn't say these things, but the good thing that came with it was the time that we had for this double album. We are very, very obsessed with details either way, but this time we really had even more time to focus on every detail, even on his eyebrows. <laughs> um, so <laughs> uh, thank you to, in that sense for the pandemic. <laughs> we, we had the time for this album. You burn your own Yes. Uh, yes. The the worst was the last show. It was the last show for me on our last actual tour in London, February 2020. I had to quit the show for the first time in my whole life to quit a show like in the middle of the show or in, after the beginning, after three songs, because I got so sick with like high fever and got really sick. And yeah, that was just the worst yeah. so far for me. I had striking diarrhea once. Mm. That's that's not that's not a joke. Uh, actually, on my birthday in Mexico City. Wasn't it Guadalajara? 
both days. Both, all right, both. Mm. Uh, and and we had a video shoot there, so like three days. Yeah, I was very very. And you got a heavy sunburn. You got a heavy sunburn and like diarrhea. Everything. Ex I had everything. Ex explosion. I had everything. So it burned look, inside and outside. <laughs> True. If you look at the video ruins, um, imagine actually class or a bass player and myself having diarrhea during that shoot. Really? Now you look at it uh, in another We should re rename that song Ruined. Ruined. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, if you work with a label and you don't recognize that there is a label, it can be the biggest compliment for our label and th this is how I mean it because we never have someone like telling us to do this do that blah 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 we always have this big support in the background that all our ideas however crazy they are they get supported and we can do what we want they did not even listen to one single tone of the entire album until it was mastered because they trusted us yeah so there's no discussion and no weird things and then when it comes to creative ideas concerning marketing and all that stuff there's a big team which can team up with us and actually brings in great ideas but in the creative process we don't even recognize that there's a company behind us helping us doing that and that is very important because yeah. otherwise that would would interfere with our creative process yeah if you start to make your music because even just even part wise because a label expects this or that from you it can't be as good as if you just like decide it for yourself and be free in what you do because that's the only way to be true in my eyes and authentic really th yeah and, and they they give us that power and that's the best thing actually you found your faith when I was I'm not that much into, I should, really shouldn't say it, but I'm not that much into the gothic rock scene. Yes, it is true that we, we're derived from the gothic rock scene because our roots are somewhere in there, but we've never been fully gothic. We will never be fully And gothic. we will never be fully metal, so I, I actually have to extend what you say. I've never really been, or I've never really felt like entirely connected with whatever kind of scene. Or that I'm like, okay, I'm I'm a metalhead, or I'm a goth boy, or I'm a yeah. whatever. I, I don't feel that way. It's like, the good thing is with our music, and also personally, I can dwell in all these things, and I can also go with a, to a hip-hop party and feel at home, because I really don't give a fuck, and I mean this in the most positive way, <laughs> really. So, I'm the wrong person to ask, actually, I think. Same. Heaven is a place where you belong You were told to heaven sure. Whoa, whoa No? S yeah. Yes, yes, but <laughs> Yeah, but same thing Is Danny Filth a gothic artist? Because since everyone's going in that genre discussion If, if you start that off Danny Filth, like, you know, a, a true gothic person would be like What? <laughs> Same thing like with black metal, because like for many people, Cradle of Filth is connected with black metal. A real black metal person would be like, yeah. would kill you for that. So maybe let's rephrase it. Would you collaborate with Danny Filth? Yes. yes. We'd love to. When I was 18, the Midian album of Cradle, which, which is still my favorite, was like uh, just mind blowing to me. Still, I can play everything on guitar still. So, um, yeah. Please, Danny. Call me. Us. <laughs> um, can't tell you, but. No. We are starting songwriting next week or something. Or two weeks for some things we have planned but we don't know if they work out the way we want then we find a different way to do it but we have plans and touring but you know what should i say there's internal plans but you found
found your faith and turned on heaven. Your blame and shame. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was I was just the first thing because I've been to so many meetings lately with like other artists that I'm producing or projects that are being like built up at the moment and always the first thing that you hear from young startups <laughs> in in the music scene is like you have to get big on TikTok. And it was like first thing was like damn I'm thinking about TikTok right now and I even yeah. I don't even want to want to do that. <sighs> I mean, it's very simple, just if you do something and if you gain a little bit of success, don't stop. Then just double your effort, because otherwise right. it doesn't get you anywhere. Just don't, after your first album, don't be like, okay, we've put out an album, now let's wait for what happens. Don't wait for what happens, just do another one. Yeah, wait, because Rammstein also waited like seven years or something. No. Yeah, but it's it's actually actually before you release your first record you should have written the second already yeah and um i really need to say it's it's like because if you want to reach someone and not be forgotten in the meantime would not want to restart two years later from zero keep pushing it in the beginning right and another thing is and that is also p part of why we are so focused on imagery and the visual concept of ourselves is have the best visuals possible the best overall look the best music videos that you can possibly do because obviously everyone in the society is glued to a screen as you are right now um no, I'm so just when, checking for more questions yeah, yeah i know when you scroll through your phone you look at image after image after image so the amount of time that someone looks at an image is maybe one second and that second better be good if you want to raise attention especially if you're starting out so try to have the best visual content possible yeah. and another thing what I just said before you is in the music and not people telling you what to do and the more you find guys to share this with and build a team and not fighting on your own it can be very helpful because this is what makes us strong we are a big team which is way bigger than that, just the band yeah. and all these people feel like being part of the band and for me they are even though they're not seen on stage and this is what makes us strong it's teamwork let's wrap up the interview you started that end i start yeah. here okay we have to to the camera. Yeah. Okay. Be careful with the mic. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. Let's wrap it up. Okay. Yeah. Can okay. you take? Yeah. Okay. okay. Bye. Here. Record a short introduction by introducing yourself. Example. Hello, I'm Chris Harms. You have to say that lead singer of the yes. band. Love Lost and you're watching Over Music. Hi, I'm Chris. And hi, I'm Chris. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I get it. Ich dachte, ich soll das sagen. Okay. Do you want to start? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're using all of that now. Yeah, hopefully. Okay, cool. Hi. Hi. <laughs> 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 ich Hi, I'm Chris, singer of Lost. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's release day today, so we're a little <laughs> wacky. Over the top. <laughs> There's a little more to that than just treason, and that was super interesting for us. What he says. You're right. <laughs> It's not a good idea to do <laughs> interviews on release day. <laughs> no, it really is not. <laughs> uh, thank you to, in that sense for the pandemic. <laughs> we we had the time for this album, obviously. Yeah, thank you, Bill Gates. No, it's China. All right, oh, China. It's China, okay. the virus. Sorry, I, obviously. I'm 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 always mixing up all these conspiracy theories. It's like like I I don't know what to believe because they all seem so so legit. Yeah. So. Totally.